Hey everyone, I'm Chef Tom and welcome to my workbench. I'm a retro computer enthusiast. I'm by no means an expert, but I'm pretty good at some stuff. And today, this VIC-20 is gonna get an S-Video mod. All right, let's jump right into this. I've got this video breakout board that I got in my care package from Commodore Bench a while ago. There's a note on the back of this that says it's S-Video only after you do the mod, not gonna be a problem. And since it's going to be S-Video only, there's really no point in putting the composite video jack on the back of this, which I went ahead and made a 3D printed case for this and I didn't even leave a hole for it, it's covered right over. Let's go ahead and grab our soldering iron and our bag of parts from Mauser. Not sponsored, just they had everything I needed. This part of the project is completely passive. It's basically the same as making a new cable with an S-Video end instead of the composite video end, uh, except this is just going to give me an S-Video jack on the back. I'm really quickly going to dry fit all the pieces, make sure they fit in well, and then solder them in. The center pin on these RCA jacks is a little thicker than I expected or will fit through this hole. So I'm cutting down the middle and folding it so it'll go through the hole and then the solder will hold it all back together again. Once we've got everything test fit, we'll start soldering. You may already have noticed a huge mistake on my part. I did not start with the shortest part first. With the S-Video plug, I started with the RCA plugs. It's okay, it's just gonna be a pain when I have to solder in the S-Video plug in a minute. Once I had the first pin soldered on the S-Video plug, the helping hands could hold it and the rest was a cakewalk. The five pin DIN gets soldered to the, to the face so that it protrudes out the back. And we're all set to go. Now we actually have to mod our VIC-20. Pretty much every guide on how to do the S-Video mod for the VIC-20 relies on the fact that you have the Rev-N variant. I don't, mine's a little older, it's a revision E, not a revision N. Which means I have to do a little more sleuthing to do this than just following someone's guide. After a bit of digging, it turns out that to do this mod on an earlier revision board, you have to remove four components and then add two new ones in a different configuration. This will break the connection between pins 4 and 5 without having to scratch out any traces like you do on the newer revision boards. It means this mod is actually reversible in an older revision board, which makes me much, much happier. First I grabbed the desoldering gun, but then I realized these are really old joints and there's probably no flux left in any of these. So I'm just going to put some fresh solder down to warm everything up get some flux in there, and then I can desolder everything. Took a little more poking and prodding, a little more heat, but eventually I got all four components out without a problem. All right, so far we've taken out the capacitor that goes to ground from pin two, which is not clearly labeled on the motherboard. The inductor at FB9, and the capacitor at C29, and the inductor that connects pin four and pin five which also not clearly labeled on the board. Between these, we have managed to disconnect pin four and pin five. They no longer are outputting the same thing. In fact, it was high, video high, video low before. I think that inductor, all it did would take, was take what was on pin five and turn it into the data for pin four or vice versa, whichever way we get video low and video high. One's for the RF modulator, one's for going straight to the TV. What we're about to do is install a capacitor and resistor between pin two off of VIC chip and pin 4 on the output. Pin 5 will be left alone. It will be our our color data. It'll be perfectly fine. We're just getting Luma out of this. Problem is everything I've read says this should be a 75 ohm resistor. I have 47 and I have 100. I'm going to try it with the 47 ohm resistor and see what happens first. So first thing we're going to do is replace where FB9 was with a 
microfarad capacitor. That's easy. And can we through hole job? We push it through, we splay the legs. And we'll solder it back in. Now the tougher part here is just about every mod has a 75 ohm resistor. I've got to run it from here to here. I don't have a 75 ohm resistor on hand. I have a 47 and a 100. Given just how dark my image is, I'm going to start with the 47 ohm. And if for some reason it doesn't work, we'll switch it to the 100. And if that doesn't work, well, then I guess I'll have to uh, run up to you do it electronics this afternoon or uh, potentially place an order with Jamco or Mauser. This one has to rest up high because I can't have it touching any of the other components. It's like a bodge wire. Those two sit in there like that. And I'll just solder them in. All right. That should do it. All that's left is to plug in an S-Video cable and find out. And You'll have to excuse my... Uh dangling wires here. I'm still doing some of the remodel for the office, but here we go. Oh my, yes, that is significantly brighter and clearer. I'm going to call this a win. So admittedly, my capture card captures darker than I see on TV, but it's not that far off. The difference is immediately noticeable, no matter what. Before I did the mod, I did a lap in pole position, and then after the mod, I went and did it again. So I'm showing them side by side so you can see just how drastic the difference is. Now granted, my runs weren't exactly the same, so, you know, putting them side by side means that you might see two cars at once or not a car at once, but you get the idea just looking at it. Going over the penultimate plus cartridge, the color difference, and even the artifacts. Just completely different after you look at the two of them side by side. That already looks better. And while I did get some baseline capture of gameplay for Cheese and Onion, it just isn't even worth showing with how bad it was, and you can already see the difference. So, here's a little Cheese and Onion. It's actually kind of a fun little game. Uh, it's on the penultimate plus cartridge, when the future was 8-bit. Not sponsored, just saying. Could put out some fun stuff.
Tonga Runyon's Parade. So I'm really excited about this mod. I haven't been this excited to play my VIG-20 and play some pole position in quite some time. It looks great, it's bright, it's crisp. I'm so happy with it. And this mod is more or less reversible. We didn't cut any traces, we didn't do anything else. Uh, we still have a good signal, which is great because every mod tutorial I've seen is for one of the newer VIG-20s, one of the cost reduced ones and does require crossing out, you know, scratching out a couple of traces, which I didn't have to do to do this. Um, but finding information on doing this mod was a little trickier, so I'm hopefully this will help you if you've got an older VIC-20 that needs an S-Video mod to look better. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this, go ahead and press that subscribe button in the center of the screen. I've also got a couple other videos I think you might enjoy.